Sugar, like any other addiction, has the world tied down like a dog on a leash. The government, the media, they've all been feeding us lies, telling us how sugary cereal is good for us for breakfast. It's part of a nutritious, balanced meal. It's not. It was only around four years ago when I found my way out of these insane cravings for sugar and managed to get in the best shape of my life. So if you want to quit sugar coming into the new year, stick around to the end because I'm about to show you six actionable steps to quit sugar. Step one, have a defined purpose. Before I quit sugar, I vividly remember the times my mom would take me to the shaved ice cream shop down the street and I would get the largest, biggest cup, which is like 32 ounces. And I'd, we'd do this like minimum twice a week. And I'd fill it up to the brim with strawberry and mango shaved ice. It's the best thing ever. And I'd eat it all myself like an absolute fatty. The worst thing was that my own mother had to see me gobble this down and gain like five pounds per month. I was just eating an obscene amount of sugar daily, which is not good. When I, around summer of 2020, I remember my dad brought home some Dairy Queen and I was just scarfing down this giant like Oreo blizzard. It was so good. You have to remember these are minimum like 2000 calories each, like from the largest size. But the part that absolutely broke my heart was the fact that my mom broke down as she was seeing me just like scarf this down. She had to watch her son go from a relatively fit, healthy, beautiful young man to this 200 pound goblin that just eats anything in its sight. There I find my core purpose for wanting to quit sugar. For my friends, for my family, to give them hope, to give myself hope, to never make my mother break down in tears again over watching her son just obliterate himself. Now here's your actionable step. Write down somewhere in like a journal or a post-it your core desire for wanting to quit sugar, your why. This can be to lose 100 pounds, to gain a mental edge in your business, to be in the best shape of your life. But you have to dig deeper than just a simple sentence. You have to ask yourself why, 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 why again and again and again, and question yourself, really get into it. So why do I want to quit sugar? Uh, to get in the best shape of my life. Why do I want to get in the shape, best shape of my life? Um, to attract more women. Why do I want to attract more women? Um, and you, you should keep repeating the step again and again and again. And then soon enough, you'll find your core desire, the reason you want to quit sugar. It's gonna be something more, more complex than just to be in the better shape. It's gonna be a true purpose, and this is what's, this is what's gonna fuel your motivation to quit sugar 100%. It'll be almost like a fail-safe, so if you were to fail, you now you have a reason to keep going. Step two, reset. When we eat sugar, our dopamine levels spike upward, and it stays up for a while until we stop eating sugar. At that point, it'll dip back down, and it'll dip below our baseline. Baseline's like our usual like amount of dopamine. However, research says that with only 48 hours of fasting from these highly palatable foods and these super sugary foods, we're able to reset that system. It's almost like we can start eating normal foods again. So, because if we were to try and eat like something normal, like broccoli or something like, like a plain chicken breast, we wouldn't enjoy those foods because we've, we're used to eating super sugary foods. But after not, not eating those for 48 hours, now we're able to finally eat something normal. We'll enjoy those foods that we couldn't enjoy before. We've reset our system back to basically level zero. Instead of being up here in dopamine, now we're back here, which now allows us to eat those good foods again. Here's your actionable step. For two days, 48 hours, eat nothing but whole foods that have no sugar in them. I'll include a quick document in the description so you guys can go and check out you know what foods are best for you and what foods can actually curb your sugar cravings. Step three, build willpower. This is something most people will actually overlook and say is just generic advice. Like they've heard it a hundred million times, but this is actually what determines the difference between quitting sugar for 30 days and quitting sugar for 30 years. Willpower is exerted when we resist against something we really do not want to do, like sugar. In order to really quit sugar, we need to build our willpower against it. This way we make sure we don't fall back into those cravings. You know, you may have heard that willpower is almost like a muscle. You need to train it every single day in order for it to grow. You need to keep using it to maintain it. We need to train it back up enough to be strong enough to resist against sugar, which is a really big desire. When I first quit sugar, the cravings were like demons in my mind trying to infiltrate. You know, they kept trying to get me to eat another scoop of ice cream, to eat that cookie on the shelf, to eat that chocolate bar. But I managed to resist enough and not <laughs> fall into those temptations. But what I did was I looked at the ice cream, I looked at the, at the chocolate chip cookie, I looked at the candy bar, and I said, no, I'm not gonna eat that. I was almost sniffing it, I was touching it, I was in it, it was in my face. But I said, no, I'm not gonna eat that. But doing this actually allows you to have self-control within yourself for sugar, but not only for sugar, but for everything else in life. Here's your actionable step. Grab a candy bar, a chocolate chip cookie, ice cream, anything that really, you really want to eat, like with a passion. And then you're gonna put it on your desk and you're gonna stare at it. 
Just stare at it, look at it, smell it, touch it, sniff it. Don't eat it. You're gonna do this during your 48 hour fast when your cravings are gonna be the strongest. You're gonna want to eat sugar, like now. This way you can build up your willpower. Just, just from looking at it, which is really, really easy. 90% of people won't even do this because they'll be like, oh, it's really stupid, no, I'm not gonna do it. But in reality, this is what creates progress. This is what allows you to go from 30 day sugar free to 30 years. Like I said, steps four and five, progressive deload and replacement. These two kind of go hand in hand, so I put them together into one step. Nobody has ever gone from eating 300 grams of sugar every single day to zero within like a day. But quitting sugar takes time, especially because our dopamine systems are hardwired into our brain. So our goal should be to reintroduce good foods into our diet instead of the ones that are bad for us. So if you're eating like three candy bars a day, we can take that down to two the next week and then down to one the following week until we're finally quitting. This way we can ensure progress, but we're not gonna go from 100 to zero immediately like that. We're gonna go slowly so we can ensure that progress without having to relapse again and again and again and again and again. This is called progressive deload and it creates the most progress compared to doing it cold turkey. Because if you were to do it cold turkey, you'll go a couple days without eating sugar. Soon enough, your cravings are gonna come back and they're gonna come back stronger than ever. And you're gonna relapse and you're gonna be worse than ever. So now with having less foods to eat, because if you've probably had like a 50% sugar diet, a lot of things now actually have so much sugar. What do I eat? And this is where step five comes in, replacement. You can replace eating sugar with an activity or an another food. When I quit sugar, I replaced sugar with fruit. I love fruit. Kiwis, bananas, blueberries, strawberries, oh, they're good. But whenever I felt like I had to eat sugar, that's exactly what I would eat. I would eat fruit. You can also do an activity that sort of puts you in your flow state, something that you can do for hours on end. You would pass by in a second. Something that you'd love to do with a passion, with a purpose. So here's your action step. Record how many grams of sugar you have every single day after the initial 48 hours. So you do this by looking at the label and checking how much sugar there is in one serving. And then you're gonna write down how many servings you had. So if you had one serving and the food had 10 grams of added sugar, well, you're gonna put 10 grams of added sugar. If you had two servings, 20 grams. So the daily number should look like a downward graph going, going this way. Sometimes it might go up, sometimes it might go down. But the plan, the goal is to have it go like this, downward towards zero. Here's another actionable step. Record the, the foods that you eat on a daily basis that have sugar in them. Cereal, like, I don't know, cake. I don't really eat that much sugar. And then what you're gonna do is plan out another meal in its place. It's gonna be eggs and ground beef for cereal in the morning. It can be plain chicken breast instead of uh, instead of cake for dinner. Step six, control your environment. So if I wanted to quit smoking cigarettes, but there were tons and tons of boxes of cigarettes and open cigarettes, I wouldn't be able to quit. It would be such an easy environment for me to, to be able to relapse, to just smoke another one easily. It's the same for sugar. If you want to quit sugar, we're not gonna surround ourselves with sugary things, are we? We need to be able to control our environment of sugar, but not only of sugar, but of family. If your grandma or your sister offered you a piece of birthday cake, would you would you say like, yeah, I'll eat it, usually? Or would you say no? What if she begged for you to try just a bite, just a tiny, tiny little bite? Would you eat it then? For a lot of people, they're gonna say, no, I know, I wouldn't, I wouldn't eat that sugar. But in reality, they would. Sometimes I find myself struggling because my sister will offer me like a piece of ice cream she'll put it in my face and be like here you want it and i say no i have to say no and she'll keep like she'll keep trying to get me to eat the ice cream until i say no you need to set boundaries between you and your family they'll become the demons who won't keep you eating sugar and keep you wanting and craving sugar and you'll fall for it every single time so here's your first actionable step decrease the amount of sugar there is in your house throw out ice cream, cookies, um, birthday cake, you know, anything has sugar, including juice. Fruit juice actually has a lot of sugar. It's not good for you. Now, for a lot of you, you're going to be living with your parents. You're going to be living with family. And sometimes you, you won't be able to control just what you have in your pantry, in your fridge. And that's okay. Your goal should be able to decrease what you have in your fridge, not completely get rid of it hundred percent. Use your second and last actionable step. Tell your family that you're going to be sugar free for 2024, that you're going to be sugar free from now on please 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 do not offer you any sugar maybe make, make the next meal sugar free make it like a nice lasagna make it like a nice uh, steak dinner but nothing that has sugar in it let them know that they need to respect you and your desires or else you're gonna be relapsing time and time again if you like the video subscribe comment i'm gonna make more content like this so if you really want to optimize your health your sugar intake subscribe thank you